Uh, so what's it like to hold one of those picket signs? What's it like or what was yeah. it like? Well, what's it like? I don't do like? it anymore. <laughs> well, good, that's the third question. <laughs> but what was it like to be a part of the Westboro Baptist Church, right? The hate church, the God hates fags church. Um, tell us about what it felt like to be on the inside of that. Honestly, it was a very like polarizing feeling. I mean, you we were holding up bizarre and vulgar and like offensive signs to people, and I was doing it at a pretty young age. Did you know that at the time? I mean, I could tell by the reaction from people that it, it was very offensive. But at the time, when I was first doing it, I was probably about 15 years old. I didn't really think about the consequences. You know, I was, I was being raised to believe a really, I knew it was a very extreme belief, and I knew that people would react differently, you know, they would be very offended, but I was not really thinking about the consequences, like how would it affect someone else. I was literally trying to be a good Christian in my Christian family and make my parents proud and make other church members proud, and that's that's what I was being taught. So it, in in the moment, did I think about, was I offending people, was I hurting people? No, to be honest, I wasn't. Not until later on, I was there for seven years, not till later on did I realize mm -hmm. what I'm doing is affecting a lot of people and on a big scale and you know, I'm offending people, I'm judging people, you know, and it's not what I wanna do, so. At the time, did you believe it was true? At the time, I wanted to. I wanted to believe what I was doing was right. I wanted to be a good Christian, I wanted to make my parents proud, I wanted to know that what I was doing was right. And I think I was searching and you know, I, I hadn't come from a religious background before then. It was, mm. you know, when I was 15 I was just learning like the Bible and the things. So I think like I was being inundated with this religion and I kind of just had to assimilate to it and I wanted it to be right. But I, it took a few years for me to realize like, these things don't match up hmm. to what I really am reading in the Bible and what I really feel as a Christian. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about when did you start feeling a sense of dissonance? Like this is, this is not right. This is not who I want to be. And this isn't, you know, what it means to be a Christian. You know, I mean, I experienced a lot of personal judgment, um, you know, when you're in that church. Like they judge you, every action, everything you do, you know, this is a sin, that's a sin, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't marry this person. Like everything you do is being judged. So I had it on a personal level, but I, I knew that on a larger scale that I was affecting, you know, people and I was judging people. And how dare I judge someone else on that kind of level or condemn someone else when I, Oh, too, I'm a sinner. I too make hmm. mistakes, just like not just me, but everyone in the church as well. Like, there's we have no reason to bring ourselves above another group of people. So, Lauren, was there a, was there a moment when you were I don't know reading the Bible? Was there was there somebody that you met in school? Was there a moment that you can put your finger on where you were you know you got back on the bus or however it was you Westboro Baptist folks used to travel, and you were like. <laughs> Uh, you know, the kind of the path to the door had started? You know, it was probably when we started picketing, like after September 11th, it was, you know, it struck the nation, obviously, very offensive. We were, we had signs that said, thank God for September 11th. We, we were holding up, you know, flags upside down and burnt flags and, you know, that's not who, that's not who I wanted to be. Like, I was, I was scared to do it, I was ashamed to do it, you know, and I, that's, that's what I, I was representing, tearing this nation apart, you know, like I just, hmm. I think that was one of the moments where I, I felt really uncomfortable. There's many other protests I could tell you, I was very uncomfortable. And um, it, it wasn't until like a few years later when I had had enough confidence to ask questions and be like, I don't think this is right. Should we be doing this? Should we be doing that? And of course that wasn't met with very much So welcome. tell us about that, because you know, I can imagine that, uh, in, in order to have injected that degree of, of hate poison, it was a pretty controlled environment. I mean, this oh, is, yeah. you know, the kind of the classic sociological definition of a cult, right? So I tell us about asking those, those questions. Um, well, like I said, it wasn't welcomed at all, and I knew it wouldn't be. Um, they pretty much just tell you, you know, what the Bible says, what you're supposed to preach. Everyone there is just, like, almost chanting the same thing, judging mm -hmm. people, constantly spewing, like, you know, 
you know, this sin and that sin, and you're going to hell and they're going to hell, and it's just a constant, like, you're constantly being bombarded with all these judgments and what you're supposed to judge others. So I think, like, to be honest, you know, I, I figured it out myself. <laughs> I so of, there's 18-year-old Lauren Drain or 22-year-old Lauren Drain who's like, well, actually, the Bible says this thing exactly. about... Exactly. And you know what? It was, everything else also became extreme. So it wasn't, as we were getting more extreme in, like, our judgments of, like, America, the community, homosexuals, you know, all across the country, we were becoming more, like, judgmental. It was also inside the church as well, more extreme. Like, just more more extreme beliefs. Like, okay, we decided we're not going to celebrate holidays anymore. We decided America, it, it, God hates America. Okay, now we decided that no more marriages. Like, just getting more and more extreme. And I was like, no. Like, I'm not just going to go with whatever they say. It doesn't match up, you know. And it took me a little while to have you know, the guts to ask questions, but once I did, I realized, no, they don't want to have anything to do with questions. They're, they're all about the control, all about, you know, did they like that judgment. They like that kind of, you know, lifestyle, and that's not something I wanted to live, so. Who's the we? Who's the we that would make that decision? Um, to be honest, um, it's mostly a family. Um, you know, it started with a pastor and his children. Fred and Phelps. Their, yeah, Fred Phelps, his children, their children. So for the most part, it's just a family, but there were a couple other families that, like, joined. Mine was one of them. And um, the, there's, like, almost like a hierarchy. Like, the, they call them the elders, and they're just, like, the older ones. They've been there forever, and they make a lot, a lot of the decisions. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I guess that's the we. So when... Um, when you know, this is uh, uh, a great Hollywood movie, and I'm like thinking about who's gonna play you. I've got like a list. Um, is there a moment when you stand up at a church service and you point at Fred Phelps and you say, no, and you walk out? Not exactly, but that sounds extremely dramatic. You like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I like that, yeah. yeah. No, uh, to be honest, it's just, it, as, cru as cruel as they look in the media, they're 10 times more cruel to their own members. Wow. Like, I can't even, I can't even explain. Like, they will... Well, ta yeah, do, do it. Let's do you I mean, explain? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, kind of, you know, take us inside. We've seen the signs, yeah. but we've only heard about... We can see the hate on the outside. The best way to describe it is it... it I, I would describe it like a gang, almost. Like, when you're in it, mm. your best buddies, you are like... They will die for you. When you're out of it, they will kill you. <laughs> like, they hate you. They will do anything to make you feel like you are this. You are worse than the scum of the earth. You know that whatever happened, whatever you touch your hand to, now that you're out, God will like doom. Like you will die of some deadly disease. You know, wh whoever you marry will end up being a horrible person. Just everything. They literally say like everything you do now will be condemned and diseased, and they pray and wish for your this and that, you know. So it's a pretty frightening, like, prospect when you, especially when, like, that's all you knew. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So that's... <laughs> so the title of the book is called Banished. It's coming out next year. Yeah. So how did that happen? How did the how banishing did I, happen? How did the banishing happen? Um, well, I guess the best way to describe it, without going into too much detail... Um, so you can read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Very smart. You've got a good publicist. Um, they have a method of like kicking people out, um, and usually it starts with it's like a proceeding, like it's a church proceeding, and like everyone votes, and like you get voted out or you can stay. I, for whatever reason, since they decided to keep making change, more and more extreme changes as the years roll on, I didn't get a proceeding of any kind. I didn't get to speak up of it at all. And I just, I came home one day from work and my dad's like, yep, you don't belong here anymore. So your dad told you my dad. Yep. You don't belong here anymore. You're going to be an evil influence on the children. So, yep. Goodbye. <laughs> so that was when I was, and I knew that it was going to be 100% communication cut off. Wouldn't be able to see my family, and um, that's how it's been. And if if anybody's seen, I, I've done a couple interviews. You know, ABC 2020. My family has denounced me as their daughter. You know, evil. How long ago was that? A um, few years. I think maybe three, four years ago. So tell Did us it about happen your... or the interview. 
uh, t no, since the band, since your dad oh, that's, saying. I was almost five years ago that I've seen my family. Yeah. So tell us about your life since. Um, I moved to Connecticut. Um, I'm working as a nurse. Um, I have my own condo. I have a dog. I have a fiance. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty active. I don't know. I do CrossFit, adventure races, stuff like that. Right decision? Yeah, absolutely. You know, looking back on it, I wish I would have left. <laughs> but honestly, I, I knew that if I wanted to stay almost selfishly for my family, for my siblings, you know, I, I didn't want to lose them. And I, I, they tear families apart. The church just, obviously, they do, you know, tear communities apart, but they tear like their own families apart. And I knew I would lose my family if I, if I left on my own. So they, they, cut, they beat me to the punch, but in the end it was good. It was absolutely the best thing for me. And I would never go back. Would you be surprised if one of your siblings or even your father showed up on your porch in two years and was like, I'm done? I left or I got banished, and how have you made it since? Because I got to figure that out now. Would I be surprised? Yeah. Um, I welcome it, and I've even said on TV, I, f I forgive them for what they've done. Like, I do have a Christian faith, and I don't hold hate in my heart against it. I don't hold a grudge. I hope one day they find, you know, love and, and kindness towards me, but, you know, I would be shocked. <laughs> I would definitely be shocked. They're too deep? Yeah. So... So let's talk about the Christian faith part. You know, as we were talking earlier, that's a part that inspired me, right? Because kind of the, the uh, archetypal version of the story is somebody's raised in, this, in a cultish environment, in an environment poisoned by hate. Uh, it's, it's strewn with Bible verses. They leave the hate. They leave the Bible. They're done with it, right? They go to the other side. But you talk about being a Christian. Um, you know, that was one of the biggest struggles. When I got banished, I was all on my own. I, you know, I struggled with it a lot. I thought I lost my identity. You know, I thought, wow, I'm an awful Christian. Horrible things are going to happen to me. People aren't going to understand. I came from this crazy cult. You know, I was lost. I was utterly lost with my faith. And I think, like, I started studying on my own. I started praying on my own, and I, and I found another way. I found that God is not what I was, had been taught all those years, and that he is loving and forgiving. And I found security, safety you know, safety and happiness in that. So I think, you know, I'm really happy. I don't, I don't, I think it's very like, it's very possible for someone to maybe, you know, say there is no God because they've gone through something traumatic. But I prayed that that wasn't the case. I prayed that I wouldn't lose my faith over, hmm. over such a traumatic experience. So, hmm. yeah. So who do you want to play you in that movie? <laughs> who do you think? I, we'll talk about that list later. Okay. Uh, tell us, when we see the Westboro Baptist Church on TV, and we see those picket signs, and I think the Supreme Court, if I'm not mistaken, decided that actually it was legal for them to pray outside of the funerals of returning of, of, of vets who had been killed in action. Yeah. Right? So we could see, still see a lot of them. Right? And part of the reason they do what they do is to get on TV, to get reported on. Exactly. What, what emotions should we have towards those folks? Oh, my God. That is such a rough question. I mean, everybody comes from different backgrounds, so I've, I feel like I can't really tell you how to feel on it. Um, but honestly, give them less attention is the best way I can describe it. And understand that if you... Like, I think it's a cult. I don't know what everyone else thinks about it. I think it's a cult, and it, a cult to me is kind of crazy. So I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? They're not right. They're crazy, and they're not right. Like, how offensive can a schizophrenic walking down the street be to you, mm -hmm. you know? It's mm -hmm. not as offensive when you realize they're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.